Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up want to thank Lori for filling in for me last while I was away. Fun fact, I actually went to Greece for my vacation. Turns out they don't want Constantin either. And that's a shame because Maggie's finally ready to kick him to the curb. So let's get into it and the rest of this week's Days of Our Lives Revelations. The big ATHEJ learning about Jude. I was hoping for more when Maggie realized Constantin's been kenning her. Her reaction felt almost too mild for finding out she'd been lied to and had her feelings manipulated for half a year. She did get upset, but I guess I wanted her to be a bit more bloodthirsty, metaphorically, about getting revenge, rather than just, let's tell the authorities. It's just feeling flat and way too telegraphed. Big wedding upsets are the bread and butter for daytime, but when you plod into it, heavy-handedly declaring you have a plan for revenge at the wedding, it loses any suspense or surprise. But at least Maggie's finally seeing the truth. Good lord. And where did Constantin murdering Maggie come from? Ha, I been missing that? If everyone was worried about it, why didn't they do more to keep an eye on Constantin? Therese is planning to marry Alex and get his money without killing him, so why can't Cod do the same? So much for all that wasted attempt to humanize him. Are they just setting him up to take drastic, violent actions when his cover is blown? Was his visit to Sarah foreshadowing that? Eh, as Laurie said to me, I mean, there's no way that whole thing was plausible, so murder? Why not? Meanwhile, at the Hall of Demera, I swear, if Johnny and Channel's baby doesn't come out with Jean Grey's mutant telepathic superpowers inherited from Susan and enhanced by radiation, I don't want this story. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for this kind of heartfelt tale with honest conversations about difficult topics like the possibility of birth defects, and moments like Johnny putting EJ in his place for that protecting the Dimra bloodline crap weave the reality of the situation into the reality of the show really well. But I wish they'd have gotten there some way other than radioactive renegade mayor. It just undercuts the seriousness of the story for me. Because this is not the X-Men. All I can say is an abortion is off the table. Days just went there for one thing, which I welcomed at the time since it's an incredibly important topic that soap operas have fled from for years. But they just went there with a black character. Doing that again would be horrendous. Parenthood is a rush for Johnny and Channel, but I do not want them to kill this baby. Can we at least get Johnny a freaking job? First, I feel like this will be one of the first stories swept away when the normal writing team returns. The baby's fine, no worries. No, they aren't back. The writers are still left out of the credits. So EJ knows it all now. Jude is Nicole's and Eric's. If he does the right thing, he runs the risk of losing Nicole. But if he does the wrong thing, he's guaranteed to. When he said Nicole and EJ do have a chance if he handles it well. We know Ariane Zucker is leaving. But that doesn't mean EJ and Nicole have to blow up before she does. But he wouldn't be EJ if he did handle it well. Also by Monday already. But fine. I'm willing to give E. Joan a trial run. Also, was I the only one who had to refrain from yelling no at the TV when Sloan wondered to Melinda whether all this effort to keep Eric was worth it? 